Good evening, I'm Victoria Sheehan. Thanks for joining us tonight. We begin with a car crash in Brookwood that has homicide investigators wondering whether alcohol was a factor. Brookwood police responded to a one vehicle accident on Camp Cherry Austin Road last night around 1130. Officials say the vehicle hit a tree and there were four injuries, the worst being a 19 year old male who remains in critical condition tonight. Another 19 year old male was driving. He suffered broken bones and a concussion. An 18 year old girl and 17 year old boy were treated for minor injuries and were then released. The investigation is ongoing. Meanwhile, in Lawrence County, a high speed chase ends with a dead driver and an injured child. This SUV flipped over after crashing through a fence and hitting several trees last night. Police say they stopped the driver on a highway and he took off while deputies were checking his license. The chase apparently reached speeds of up to 100 miles an hour before the, cra before the crash. The driver was thrown and pronounced dead at the scene. Officials say his five-year-old daughter was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's deputies were called out to Highway 43 in Northport on a shooting earlier today. Deputies found a 42-year-old man who had a single gunshot wound to his chest. According to Captain Lloyd Baker with Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide, the suspect, a 45-year-old man, was also at the scene. He told investigators the victim hit him in the face, then came at him with a knife. That's when the suspect shot him. Baker says they believe the suspect acted in self-defense. The victim is in stable condition at this time. The case is still under investigation. Well, he came up with the idea the second week of December when a contractor in Afghanistan asked him for a Crimson Tide t-shirt. And already, Justin Chrysler has sent 1,500 Can I Get a Roll Tide t-shirts to U.S. troops around the world. WVUA's Emily Forrester takes you on a tour of the nonprofit company Tide for Troops. Former University of Alabama student Justin Chrysler started sending t-shirts to troops just over two months ago. When I received something as a child, whether it was a Christmas present or it could be just something real simple, if it had Alabama on it, then I would, you know, I was always happy and always excited. So I kind of thought that they might think the same thing. And, you know, there was no way to really tell until they got the shirts. The shirts say, can I get a Roll Tide on the front and Roll Tide on the back? Roll Tide! Chrysler says sending them a little piece of home is his way of showing appreciation for military service. Well, I was so blown away by some of the... Uh, response that I got, some of the, the feedback from some of these troops that it put me in tears a couple of times. Most programs for troops send us care packages with your normal stuff that we have tons of and he decided to give us something that we don't have access to. Army National Guard Specialist Kayla Watkins is stationed in Afghanistan and she says Tide for Troops helps boost morale in one of the best ways possible. I think it's a great program. It's a way for us to support our teams while we're here. And it's a lot of fun and friendly rivalry also with the other people who like other football teams. I mean, can I get a roll tide? I mean, everybody's going to walk up to you and say roll tide. You know, that's just, that's, that's the way we do it in the University of Alabama. And in the coming days, Chrysler says the program will begin to expand to all universities. So we want to stretch out to other schools, all the SEC schools, and we're going to keep on moving on up to every single team. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Emily Forrester. Roll Tide all day, every day. WVUA News. Chrysler's program has grown drastically over the past two months. To donate, become a sponsor, buy a shirt, or, or request a shirt for military personnel, visit WVUATV.com and click on Numbers and Links. High school juniors and seniors from all over the country made their way to West Alabama this weekend to take part in Marion Military Institute's Night Fox Challenge. The program is a test of determination consisting of 36 hours of physical, academic, and time management skills. WVUA's Chelsea Barton takes us inside the event. The Night Fox Challenge was designed to identify, evaluate, and recruit individuals who aspire to be in the U.S. Armed Forces, attend one of the five U.S. service academies, or for those who want to know if Marion Military Institute is the right fit for their college career. When they get here, they become part of a family. Uh, they're going to build friendships that will last them a lifetime, no matter where they go from here. And everybody will go someplace else when they leave here. I mean, this isn't the end of the line for them. Uh, but it, it speaks to the experience that they have here, that this really matters to them. That's how special that this place is and how unique this whole experience is for our cadets. Prospective cadets say that the weekend has not only been fun, but has helped them prepare for their military futures. I think the grappling was actually the coolest because I'm quite afraid of heights. Come on, come on, come on. And it was really up, up, hard for me to get up there and do that. 
I've learned to listen to your leaders and how important that is. Parents of these young men and women are also giving the Night Fox Challenge two thumbs up. When we arrived here, you know, he, he was a teenager. He was uh, you know, your typical kid. You know, yeah, uh-huh. And we just spoke just a few minutes ago, and, and he was actually talking a lot like these cadets that he's been around all weekend. He was uh, attentive and more respectful and, and it was, uh, it was pretty impressive. Yes. Ms. Hedford was so impressed, yeah. she decided to you you got you. You got you. Cross your feet. Woo! She's not the only one who wants to give these guys a run for their money. Reporting in Marion, Chelsea Barton, WVUA News. Oh, oh my God. Watch tonight. Talks have been ongoing across the state of Alabama about allowing police officers to patrol schools. And the city of Coleman is taking steps to make that a reality. Officials say the city's schools have teamed up with retired police officers to monitor their schools. The school board will pay $38,000 in salary and benefits for the five officers. And the city will spend $42,500 on training equipment and automobiles. The officers are expected to start patrolling right away. Meanwhile, Facebook has come forward saying it was recently hacked. The company described it as a sophisticated attack that took place in January. They say no data about its more than a billion users was compromised. According to a blog post on Friday, the attack happened when a small number of employees visited an infected website that installed malware on their machines. But Facebook officials say it was handled immediately and that they will continue to work with law enforcement and others in the industry to prevent future attacks. Welcome back. A big name in music made an appearance last night at the Pastime Theater in Winfield as part of their 2013 concert series. WVA's Elena Fondren sat down with the music legend and has more. Country music star Pam Tillis played to a sold-out crowd last night at the Pastime Theater in Winfield. Tillis was the third act as a part of the Winfield concert series and appreciates this community for putting it together. A theater like this in a small community like this is, I think it's, uh, it's, it tells a lot about the people that live here that they care enough to, to put this thing together. Being a big star in a small town isn't unfamiliar to Tillis as throughout her career she has played in many different size venues. Winfield's a small town but I, I love small towns. You know when we moved to Nashville, Nashville was a small town but we play all different size venues and all different size towns and I love, you know, I love the heartland. I love, I love small towns. 2013 is looking to be a busy year for the star as she is getting ready to release her new album with Lori Morgan called Dose Divas. And you may be surprised where some of the song inspirations come from. It's funny, we'll sit at the autograph table and we'll, we'll somebody will say something and I'll say, oh, that sounds like a song idea or she'll do that and I'll, I, you know, we're always, we started writing these songs at the autograph table. The busy star will also be appearing soon on ABC's hit series Nashville that was written by a friend of hers. It's really cool. Uh, the series, I love the series, even if my friend wrote it. I'm, I'm not just being partial. I think it's really good. And no matter where Tillis's career takes her, she says Alabama will always be special to her. I really want to do a, like an Al Alabama pilgrimage because this is some of my roots and it's a neat state. Reporting in Winfield, Elena Fondren, WVUA News. For more information about Pam Tillis' upcoming events, you can visit her website at www.pamtillis.com or like her on Facebook at facebook.com slash pamtillis. Too many girls use the word marriage and say that they, it has a nice ring to it. WVUA's Tara Rose shows you how brides are vowing to keep the big day local. Happily Ever After starts here at the Southern House and Garden. There are more places just right outside of Tuscaloosa that were, to me, a little bit better and a little more unique. Brides to be got the chance to visit the southern venue, see the possibility for flowers, cakes, and photos, and those in the wedding industry benefited too. 
gets us out in the public and we meet lots of brides and that's what we specialize in weddings. Shows like this one bring more excitement for local brides for the day when they get to walk down the aisle. So it makes, definitely makes things more real and exciting. <laughs> Model Jordan Toolidge has a ring, but playing the part is just as exciting. It's fun being able to put on wedding dresses and get dressed up again. Reporting in Knoxville, Tara Rowe, WVUA News.